So this has been one of my favorite bridal trials of this season and um, I've done this a couple of times before and it's really cool to see that the results hold true. And this is with the Carlin peas. And so Carlin peas, also known as black badger peas or black peas, um, not black eyed peas, those are a totally different thing. Um, but the Carlin peas are fantastic, super documentable back to the pre-1500s and earlier. The pea themselves are this beautiful little round sphere and they're speckled and this delightful color. So one of the things that really inspires you when you're reading your historical cookbook texts and when they're always saying like cook the white peas, the white peas, and you're like okay so that's obviously not a green pea kind of thing going on but white peas, what's going on with that? I think that's a differentiation between the Carlin peas that also the black badger or these black peas, something that is a very darker pea. Does it matter? Yeah, actually it does. So when you're cooking with some of the darker colored peas, oftentimes they have this deeper, darker, more complex flavor profile. Much like if you're cooking uh, white or light colored garbanzo beans against the red or the black garbanzo beans, there's gonna be a huge different uh, taste profile with that. Same holds true with the peas. So the fun thing about these is that because Carlin peas have remained a constancy throughout various cultures, especially within England, even to the current modern era, we get to see this really neat um, bifurcation or distinct evolution or selection from the more medieval traditional heirloom pea types of the Carlins to the modern uh, bred Carlins. Um, so this one here is definitely distinctly a more modern like um, agricultural crop type of Carlin and this is the red fox Carlin. So the flowers have, oh we still have a few, <gasps> ooh and a really pretty one right here. Excellent. This is going to be a great example of very different, couple different traits. So the flower itself is this beautiful white flower with a red um, well, a white banner and a red flower, or kind of this peachish kind of flower. Um, so, red fox carlin. And then the other thing to note with this is look at that tendril. All right, so this is what is called hypertendrilling. And it is a characteristic that is bred with modern peas to make them short. And then the tendrils themselves are shorter, and there's a lot more tendrils. And what that does is it allows the crop to grow on itself and kind of create this tangled mess of interlaced pea um, vines. And they support each other through this process, which is great when you're wanting to grow something kind of more out in the field or without like all the pea sticks and the structural elements that are required with kind of our more historic heirloom type of pea crops. So, I mean, this hypertendrilling is just fantastic. Look at that. That's just such a beautiful tangled mess. It is lovely. All right, so with that, one of the things with the Carlin peas, you have this whole phrase of Carlin Sunday, farting Monday, as it relates to the Carlin holiday, the Carlin Sunday, which is I think it's the fourth Sunday before Easter. I don't know. I'm not very good at my Catholic holidays, but it's early in the spring. And this is one of the illuminating things that I have found is that I always thought when they're talking about Carlin Sunday is this big festival of spring of renewal of growth. And so they would be eating the green pea. But when you look at the more heirloom Carlins, this this little one has yet to even start flowering and here we are in June. So there's no way that they're eating fresh green peas in medieval time periods um, back in March time frames like before Easter. So definitely the carling peas that they talk about eating are associated with the dry peas most likely. At least that's my theory um, that I'm running with. But back to the Carlin peas and so that's another fun difference here between the more historic heirloom varietal of Carlin peas um, versus the modern Carlin peas of the red fox is that the red fox is already producing pea pods and it is going strong 
whereas our more heirloom type is taking its time. I'm actually really surprised that it hasn't started flowering. So maybe this isn't a good example of it for this year. But in general, the Carlin heirloom pea is slower to the start or slower to the finish line than the modern red fox carlin. So with the red fox carlin or with any of the carlin peas, you have also a very narrow window. So you can eat them when they're tiny and green like this, pod and all. Mm. The pod has a lot more texture to it and you can tell that <laughs> this is going to get chewy really fast. And so then when we come to a pod from the red fox that looks something like this with the carlins, um, it looks like a sugar pea. You think you can eat it like a sugar pea. But you bite into it and you can't even <laughs> break the thing in half. Uh, it is rigid. It is ready to go. I'm hoping that maybe this is going to be good armor against the pea weevils that are soon to come. Because um, the pea weevils will come. There's always weevils. But inside you can start to see that the peas are beginning to develop into sweet tasty bits. Mm. And you can just take your teeth and pull off the peas. Whew. That's some good happy tastiness there. So again, much like um, our modern fresh peas but not nearly as sweet, just a beautiful depth of flavor. I really adore the Carlins. Uh, there's a reason why that they are the ones that have really um, persisted throughout the eras. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully my heirloom carlins finally starting to flower and produce some pods and I can report back on what's going on with those.